Hey guys, guys, on DBA Genesis, I am going to introduce a lot of projects. But even though I have a lot of ideas about what kind of projects I should post on our website, I actually want to know from you guys what type of projects, these are real time projects. So, what type of projects would you like to see on DBA Genesis? Please put your project ideas in the comments. Meanwhile, let us start the show. We are back guys and guys regarding the projects that I just mentioned actually the thing is like even though we have so many courses I mean a lot of you guys have sent me so many emails saying like Arun why can't we have real time projects where you work directly with me on some of the real world challenges on real world servers and we kind of like figure out how and what are the solutions to the real world problems. That being said guys, these projects are something that I'm going to launch. We already have some projects, but these are high-end projects. These, the current projects that we have on our website, these projects are for six months to one year, like pretty big projects. But now we are going to introduce something called as mini projects and I need ideas from all of you. What kind of mini projects you guys want to work on with me or with my team so that you learn faster. Because I know courses is good for people who are starting from scratch. But I know some of you who are already working in IT industry and you might have the theoretical knowledge, but now you want to implement it, but you don't have that environment to implement those practical stuff. For example, most of you know the theoretical aspect of Oracle Data Guard, but you don't have an environment to practice these mini real-time projects for example we have oracle data guard mini real-time project right so in this mini real-time project what you can do is you can work with one of our team members who will be uh, allocating servers to you so that you can configure your own physical standby that's just an idea but in case if you have any ideas on what type of real-time projects you want to work on please put those details into the comments that being said, let us start our show. What's your recommendations on when to use indexes in a query? Guys, in one of my episodes, I have already answered this question, but I'll rephrase it for all of you because it is very important to understand when to use indexes. Guys, indexes are good when you are fetching a small percentage of data. So guys, let's take, I want to select an employee whose employee ID is 105, okay? Now the employee ID column will definitely have the index created. So let's take you have 1 million employees. I know it's practically not possible or probably, I don't know. So if you have 1 million employees, now out of those 1 million employees, you are trying to fetch 0.0001% records, right? This is just one employee details that you want to fetch. In this kind of scenario, index will be faster, right? So now you compare the output, the total output records with the total number of records, right? So now comparing this, definitely the percentage of output records is very small. In this case, indexes is good. So my idea is very simple. What you can do is whenever you have a table where you are trying to fetch the records and if the records that you're trying to fetch is 40% or below than the total number of records, then I think you should go for the indexes. And by the way, guys, also in one of my previous episodes, I mentioned this one. The index will always be used only when the index column is used in the WHERE clause. So if you do not have the employee ID column in the WHERE clause, the Oracle database will not use the index. So make sure you have the index column used in the WHERE clause. I hope that answers your question. Let's move on to the next one. Under multi-tenant architecture, do you recommend global temporary table spaces or dedicated local temporary table spaces for each PDB? All right, before I answer this question, I will ask you this question to you guys. See guys, Oracle is very simple. You don't have to kind of like think out of the box and try to find the answers to uh, the solutions or probably Google it up. I think you can, but all right. So see, for this question, let us think logically, okay? Forget about Oracle, forget about temporary table space. 
What do you think which one would be better? Like to have dedicated temporary table space for each PDB or to have one global temporary table space? I think you all know the answer. So if you have dedicated temp table space, definitely each PDB will have its own temporary table space and each PDB will function smoothly, right? So now if you have a global temporary table space, the problem is one temporary table space is now shared with multiple PDBs. So let us assume one PDB is using or eating up a lot of temporary table space. What happens? The temporary table space will be less available for the next PDB, right? So to solve these kind of questions or to find solutions to these kind of problems, guys, think logically, okay? Now, most of the times the logical answers is what is the right answer. So to answer this question, I think you now know for a multi-tenant architecture, always go with local temporary table space so that you have a locally assigned temporary table space to each PDB, right? Don't go for global temporary table space. I think in 12C release one, uh, you were supposed to create one big global temporary table space, but from 12C release two, it allows you to create the local temporary table space. That being said, let's move on to the next question. How to solve Aura 1.8? maximum number of sessions exceeded this is simple guys in oracle database you have a limit on the number of sessions that users can create inside the oracle database right of course you would want to limit the number of sessions inside the oracle database or you will not allow thousands of people to kind of like create sessions right if you have more sessions more pga more temperia more undo more uh, instance utilization right so there is always by default Oracle has a limit on the number of sessions that can access the database but of course to solve this error it's very simple you increase the sessions parameter you can do that but there is a formula if you are touching the sessions parameter inside the Oracle database you actually have to edit or modify two more parameters the first one is processes parameter then the next one is transactions parameter so if you edit the sessions parameter you have to make sure that you are editing the processes parameter and you are also editing the transactions parameter and guys there is a formula to calculate all this i'll put this formula into the description of this video for example if you want to increase the sessions parameter by 500 so you need to also increase the processes parameter and you need to also increase the transactions parameter now to calculate all these three there is a formula and i'll put that formula into the description of this video make sure you all go through that formula and use that formula for your real time also to calculate how many sessions you can allow inside the oracle database and guys i remember like this question was asked to me probably thousand times like how do we calculate the number of sessions inside the oracle database I think this formula will help all of you. So you need to have the processes number and then there is a sessions formula and there is a transactions formula. So the first one is you start with processes. So number of processes will define the number of sessions. The number of sessions will define the uh, number of transactions. If you use this formula, you can actually get how many sessions you can set up inside the Oracle database because all these three parameters are dependent on each other you cannot increase the sessions parameter without increasing these two parameters the processes and the transactions make sure you go through the formula in the description of this video meanwhile let's move on to the next question what are lockdown profiles in multi-tenant architecture guys in a normal database if we understand if we are giving alter session privilege to any user right so what happens the user can actually perform any command that is part of alter session group right so let's take alter system the user wants to change some system parameters correct so if you are giving alter session permissions the user gets all these sub permissions to change within the alter session now this is a huge security gap i feel so what oracle did is oracle started like locking down the profiles now even if you give the alter session permission to a user you can define like within alter session 
what all commands the user can execute and what all commands user cannot execute. This is actually the lockdown profiles. So with lockdown profiles, you have the power to disable the alter system commands for a user, alter partitioning command, or alter network access commands. I think you get the idea, right? So even though you assign one big level permission, for example, alter session, within alter session, you will have sub permissions, right? So you can even restrict like in alter session, this particular user can only run one particular sub permission, right? I think probably I'm confusing you guys. So rather than me telling more about lockdown profiles, I would want you all to read about lockdown profiles on Google, you will get fair deal of uh, details about the same. With that, let's move on to the last question of the day. When do you recommend to go for Oracle Autonomous Database? Hmm, great question. See guys, I don't recommend to go for Oracle Autonomous Database until unless you have huge and deep pockets because Oracle Autonomous Database is very costly. But I can actually tell like the difference between the normal database and the Oracle Autonomous Database. So the normal database, what happens is you install, you set up the backup, you do the patching, you do the indexing, you maintain the partitions, you perform the recoveries, everything is performed by you, right? But, okay, even before I go on to the Oracle Autonomous Database, with the normal database, you perform all these activities and then you use the database, right? So it's like there is a database admin team that is managing the entire database and then a, I mean a client is using the Oracle database. So I mean client definitely needs a DBA team to be dependent, perfect. But with Oracle Autonomous Database what happens is all these things like setting up of the database, uh, the indexing, the partitioning, the backup of the database, patching, upgrades, all these things are automatically taken care of by Oracle. Now the most or the highly asked question or the like I get email on this question every single day and the question is like Arun will autonomous database take away Oracle DBA jobs? This is silly question guys. I know that Oracle has automated lot of the traditional DBA tasks like you don't back up the database, you don't patch up the database, right? That's perfectly fine understand from the application point of view now the application wants to create a user do you think it will happen automatically into the autonomous database it's impossible a dba has to create the user right now some permissions are to be assigned to the new user who will do that a dba right and let's take when you create the data model like you have data modeling team which will design all the tables how would autonomous database automatically create those tables? It's impossible. So there needs to be someone who manages inside the database, okay? So if you look at the Oracle database, right? So the outside tasks of the database are getting automated. Let's take the backup, recovery, and your partitioning, automatic indexing, stats gathering, right? Outside database things are getting automated. And you as an Oracle DBA, you are now being forced to focus only inside the database activities. That being said, the database refreshes. It is still like a manual job. Let's say you have the Oracle Autonomous Database and you want to perform a schema migration. Who would do that? Oracle Autonomous Database doesn't look like where do you want to refresh the schema, right? That being said guys, so even though you have a lot of activities that are automated in the Oracle Autonomous Database, now to answer this question, when do you recommend to go for Oracle Autonomous Database? I would recommend only when you have deep pockets and you can actually afford the Autonomous Database. It's actually costly. It's not easy or it's not simple to afford because I see and work with so many clients and at least right now I haven't seen clients kind of like throwing money onto the Oracle Autonomous Database because it's real costly. That being said guys, let's move on to the most exciting part of the show and that is the bonus question. I'm back guys. And guys, this one thing I recently observed, one of our team members, what he did, you know, he was trying to perform a full database export and the problem was, I mean the full database export was failing. Now, 
I mean, when he told me, I felt like, okay, why would full database export fail? So we kind of like tried to debug the full database export that command. And you know what we found? I mean, I think this is a new learning for him and for all of you. For me, I know this. But earlier, I didn't realize that this might be problem. So guys, understand this. You want to try to export the entire database. Don't you think you should have the DBA privileges to perform that? operation you are trying to copy or export the entire database right you got to have the dba privileges so what happened is when i looked at the command and we found that the team member was using a user or the schema inside the database which didn't have the uh, i mean dba privileges and that's why the full database export was failing so one learning for all of you if you want to perform the full database export make sure the schema with which you are performing the export it has the dba level privileges if you are performing with the sysdba user definitely you won't find any errors right that's all for today guys and we will meet in the next episode bye